Hi, this is Eric Smith. I thought I would take a moment to shoot an impromptu video. I was working earlier today. I work from home. And as I was working, my wife uh, showed me a Facebook post from a friend of ours uh, celebrating what I eventually found out a lot of people were celebrating today, that Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, a lot of us um, thought that this was going to happen. Um, since that leak came out uh, months ago about this decision and the leak if nobody You know, I'm sure everybody knows about that But someone leaked that this was going to happen and I think the person that leaked it wanted it to come out Because I guess they thought they could galvanize people on the left to pressure the Supreme Court judges Not to vote the way that they were going to vote so much so that they were picketing outside these judges' houses. Um, even one of the judges was threatened, and they arrested somebody for going over uh, Judge Kavanaugh's house because this person was going to attempt to murder Judge Kavanaugh. Um, I guess over the abortion thing and a whole bunch of other things, too. The guy, you know, gave himself up. But this is how crazy it was that people were actually going crazy about the fact that Roe v. Wade could be overturned. Well, today, um, it was overturned. Um, nine Supreme Court judges, uh, the decision was six to three. So it was a majority decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, I have to tell you something. As a Christian, I am very thrilled about this result. I'm glad that the Supreme Court made the right decision. Um, they made the right decision uh, biblically, and I'll get into that in a minute because I always like to bring the Word of God into all these situations. But um, it was also a good thing to do uh, constitutionally because the Roe v. Wade situation brought in a law about abortion that actually wasn't a law. Uh, that's not how we make laws in the United States of America. Court decisions don't determine laws. So this should have been overturned a long time ago. The problem is the people on the left are really triggered and they're really flipping out and they have even threatened violence in a lot of cities in their protests. They're like, hey, we're just going to go crazy out here because we want to have the right to kill children. Now, some of them would say that because they have no shame. Some of them aren't saying that. They're just using the typical excuses, you know, it's a woman's right to choose. It's a woman's health care. Yeah, you're taking away women's rights. This is always the narrative. It's an illogical argument, and it's an unbiblical argument. But when I thought about all the threats that were going on, I thought about Romans chapter 3, because this seemed to epitomize the people that were against Roe v. Wade being overturned. And now you see them all over the place talking about it. Our president, President Biden, spoke on it. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke against it. Um, you have a lot of Democrat senators and um, congressmen speaking against it. Um, the mainstream media that's really left-leaning is, is speaking against it. So everybody is getting upset that their sacred cow, abortion, um, may be in danger because Roe v. Wade um, is being overturned. But everything that these people were saying were the most ridiculous, crazy, illogical things I've ever heard. And as I was listening to people getting upset about it because abortion is threatened and that's their sacred cow, I thought of Romans 3 uh, verses 13 through 18. And the word of God reads this way. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When I see people that are pro-choice, that are getting upset, and they're getting all over social media, and they're complaining, and they're giving threats, and they're saying they're going to do A, B, C, D, because the fight isn't over and for 50 years they've been able to kill their babies and now because they can't kill their babies they're going to go out and be destructive so everything they're doing i read in these verses the things that are coming out of their mouths is wicked and they're liars 
Um, they have ways of destruction and misery because they're threatening violence. Their feet are swift to shed blood because they want to kill babies and they want to enjoy killing babies and they want to make excuses for killing babies. And of course, there's no fear of God before their eyes. It's a sad thing. These are unsaved people and they just want to practice wickedness. But today is a day of rejoicing because the Supreme Court did the right thing and Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, in the midst of celebration as a Christian, we want to look at things biblically. And first, we have to understand that this is just a first step. Just because this is being overturned doesn't mean that states are not going to practice abortion. Um, Left-leaning states are still going to do it because now this decision has left the decision of abortion up to the states. And there's a lot of states that are going to just jump on board uh, with this decision and go, hey, you can't have abortions here. But I live in New York State, and I can tell you right now, our governor... Uh, she is all for abortion, and she's going to fight it tooth and nail. I know in California they're going to fight it. So most of the states on the in the Northeast and in the West are really going to try to keep abortion going. Because, again, this is a left-leaning thing. It's a socialist thing. It's a Marxist thing. It's an ultra-liberal thing. They want to kill children. They hate the family structure. So killing children is right on board with that, just like they want women out of the homes and they want them running around and they want men to be effeminate. This is the kind of thing that the left likes. That's why not just abortion, you see the LG, uh, LB, well, you know all the letters, the lesbian, the gays, the transgenders. This is why they promote all these things. But this is still a first step. This is why as Christians, we need to be continually prayerful about this, and we need to fight the good fight. I know that there's a lot of unsafe conservatives out there. Um, they're fighting, and to be honest with you, they've been sounding the alarm just as much as Christians, and they're rejoicing too. That's why you have a bunch of people um, outside the Supreme Court protesting. You have the pro-life and the pro-choice. I don't know if it's come to blows yet. Hopefully it hasn't as I'm recording this, but uh, violence may still occur, so we need to pray that that doesn't happen. The fact of the matter is, we need to keep sounding the alarm as Christians and let the unsaved world know that abortion is murder. That's why Roe v. Wade should have been overturned. Uh, Genesis 127 says we're made in the image of God. God is our creator and he makes us in his image. And if you read Psalm 139, 13 through 16, in fact, I am going to read that. You will see that God is the creator from the very beginning. It reads, for you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they are they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Wonderful verses. God is our creator. He is the creator of life and that's right at conception and as Christians our pro-life stance begins with a biblical worldview I want to read um, another set of another set of verses from Psalm talking about children this is Psalm 127 and I'm going to read verses 3 through 5 it reads behold children are a heritage from the Lord the fruit of the womb is a reward is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior so are the children of one's youth happy is the man who has his quiver full of them they shall not be ashamed but shall speak with their enemies in the gate children are a blessing from god they really are in the scriptures whenever a woman was barren that was a sad thing in fact they almost took it as a sign of of judgment as as if they sinned God opens up the wombs. It is a wonderful thing that women can carry children. 
that a child could be conceived and they can carry another life for nine months. This is a wonderful thing. It's so funny. People in this world, people in the sun-saved world, will have joy unspeakable about cats having kittens, dogs having puppies, birds um, hatching, uh, watching their young hatch from eggs. They're all happy about that. And they will fight tooth and nail to keep that going. But they belittle a human life in the womb made in the image of God. This is how backwards our thinking is. That's why, even though this has been overturned and we can still celebrate it, we need to do a lot of work. We need to keep teaching the unsaved that it's a life made in the womb and that it's murder, that it's a life made in the image of God, and that murder is prohibited by God. That's why if you read Genesis 9-6, it, it says right out that when you're murdering someone, you're murdering someone in the image of God, and that's why you're not to do it. You're not to shed blood innocently. And that's why Proverbs 6.17, the end of it, says it's one of the things that God hates. He hates people that shed innocent blood. And of course, Exodus 20.13 says, Thou shalt not murder. So even though Roe v. Wade has been overturned today, and we can rejoice over it, and let's keep rejoicing. Let's prepare ourselves because, like Ephesians 6 says, it's a spiritual battle. And we have to put on the whole armor of God because the powers that be, the wickedness in spiritual places, and the unsaved that really embrace this wicked sin are not going to stop doing the things that they need to do to try to make abortion continually legal. They want legalized murder of babies, and they'll do anything to keep it going. And they'll keep coming up with all these excuses, the same dumb excuses, the same illogical excuses they always come up with. A woman's right to choose. A, a, a woman's right to do what she wants with her body. These are all illogical things. What they're trying to negate is the fact that it's a child in the womb. It's a human being in the womb. It's a human being made in the image of God. And they should cherish and love that instead of wanting to, wanting to kill these children. And you know what? As Christians, we need to stand up. For the unborn we need to stand firm for life all life and that begins in the womb i thank you so much um, for listening to this i'm again really happy about roe v wade being overturned and let's be prayerful that it continues to be overturned but let's pray that there's no violence let's pray that people will have calm hearts and god will calm their hearts not to do anything violent but you know what? The unsaved world needs the Lord Jesus Christ. They need the gospel. And we need to go out and give them the gospel so they have a changed heart and a changed mind so they would never want to kill their babies again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And God bless.